that I look at here, Jake, entries. I mean, every single player, every single player is involved in 10 entries or more. Mm. Wild. Well, I mean, it probably goes back to the team ethos in terms of the fact they're all calling, they're all entering, they've yep. all got their own responsibilities. So, you know, it's an intriguing dynamic that clearly is working locally. I'm going to be curious to see how it works internationally Oof. when, you know, it's not going to be as easy for the likes of Sage and Fisher to, to get entry kills and how does that then work? So, but yeah, Tuhan, obviously the focus again, what a stage. MVP, the stage for me, yep. uh, has slotted in perfectly. I, I mean, to be fair, you could probably take a couple of players and just say, "Hey, you're playing. You're playing with GG this stage. Go have some fun." You know, and he's got the li the license to frag as well. And yep. I think you're right. I don't know if it's that one for one swap. I think it's literally just come in, play your role, frag out, com, um, and we can maybe get like a Wettables or a Sage to go play a little bit more of a, a versatile flex role. So yep. I think it's there's. It, I think there's a lot of players in the region that would be jealous. Imagine if you go to save and you say, "All right, you're in next stage for Inspector Two on." <laughs> would he put, put the same numbers? Maybe not the exact same, yep. but I think you'd see him scale up quite high over what he would usually put up. Yeah, well, uh, look, I think head-to-head, -head, it's going to be tough to make a, a, a case for Antic here. They have looked decent, uh, you know, all, grand, all, all things considered after their first couple of play days. Uh, so hopefully they can hold their own against the strongest team in Australia right now and New Zealand uh, and all of the neighbouring <laughs> islands around us. So Oceania, if you really think about it like that, let's have a look at the maps here as we start to break this one down. Again, we say it every single time. No we go bank, up against... no club, no labs. This is already a win, whatever it is from here. I mean, the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter where you go, Game and Gladiators will be the better team. Skyscraper for me actually might be a little bit interesting. I I can't remember the last time I saw, I'm going to say this now and it's going to have been last play yeah. day, but I can't remember the last time I saw Game and Gladiators on uh, Skyscraper. So... I'm I'm curious. Yeah, about this I don't one. think it's a super popular map for them. I obviously don't have the stats up right now, and I think it actually is quite a popular map for Antic. I've seen them play it a fair bit, which could actually be something uh, that works against them in the end, because uh, of course, Gaming Gladiators are a team that's super prepared. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, of course, they've got the coaching staff as well that do a lot of the work for them. Yep. Uh, as we can see there, Antic have played this map once and lost it. I believe that was to Outlast. You're right. Um, good. And that was actually the first play day. The first game, first play day. Yeah, so good. Yeah. good Vinny doesn't win. miss, mate. Thank no, he you. doesn't miss. Thank you. I just remember Yentai shooting somebody that was playing yeah. Blaz through the... Uh, How many attacking rounds did Antic get? Uh, two. No, they got none. Oh, true. <laughs> oh, wait. Was it a 7-4? Seven, 7-4. Seven, four. Seven, four. It was a 4-2 four, yeah. half. They had four on defense to begin and then nothing on attack. No, nothing. So something to probably take into this, though, if you're... Uh, looking at Antic, can can you get some of this? Uh, Skyscraper is not easy to attack into, right? So you're going up against Game of Gladiators now. But that was also at a very different point in the stage such a long time ago. I think yep. Antic have improved as the stage has gone on. Doesn't really change my mind, though. GG should win this comfortably. All right. Well, uh, let's not waffle any longer. Let's get this one underway. We've got two SI talent members. One has, unfortunately, cast the grand final, so he's got you in that column, mate. <laughs> I'll just let you handle it then. If I uh, haven't, I haven't played in an SI show match. <laughs> that's though, actually so. true. That's my claim to fame. I haven't won. What was it? One v three clutch. Oh, and I a mean, TK, I personally, and a TK wasn't, I personally wasn't counting. I might have team killed Macy J and then clutched up big. You know, the only non-Brazilian team to win in front of the Brazilian crowd. No big deal. True. No big deal. You but excited for this one? I actually am. Okay. We were talking about this. I think this match does have some importance mm -hmm. because it is a rematch of the Stage 1 Grand Final. Once Ooh. upon a time, it was Bliss versus Man LFO. Now it's Gaming Gladiators versus Antic. And, uh, well, Antic have a lot still to prove. We've been very unconvinced of this new Antic roster. We think that losing two players, at least my take on it, guys, is losing two of their best players to Cheese has probably set them back quite a bit. 43% of people are Antic one tricks, apparently. <laughs> okay. Bold prediction, yeah. but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm happy to be proven wrong in this matchup. Uh, important to note, uh, as I'm sure the desk would have highlighted, this match means quite literally nothing for Game Gladiators outside of a form check and just to make sure they're looking sharp for playoffs. I think flawless would be nice. Yeah. They I are, they love are yet. Mitch, not Sage on. I love Blast Mitch. Uh. Okay, that's cool, Chef. <laughs> is he trying to get favors from the admins? I don't know what that's I about. I think he is. I don't know. Can we, like, report him for... What's he showing now? Strawberries. Strawberries in season at the moment? Yeah, they're actually quite cheap. I think it's, like, 280 at Woolies for a punnet, which is pretty solid. Like, that's cheaper than avocado. Really? Yeah. I'm not a strawberry man, so... Oh. You're lost. You an avocado guy? Yeah. Oh, so... Avo on toast. You're Smashed not... avo on toast. So that's you're why... not going to afford a house? That's why I don't have a house. Damn. Unlucky, bro. Sorry, what? Thermite ban? What year is it, guys? That's crazy.
I actually kind of love that. That's uh, There's a couple of spots where Thermite hits Diffy on Skyscraper. You think about when people breach the external Geisha wall and it opens up the wall into Drum as well. So that's not on the cards anymore. A little bit edgy there from GG. Yeah, I'm having a look back at some of GG's bands. It was Blitz uh, last week, Deimos, the Playday before, the Monty. Um, going even further back, the Blitz again. And then the first two Playdays was the Ying and Deimos once more. Mm. So it is their first Thermite ban of the stage. And again, maybe just testing waters a little bit. They're not going to show all their cards, not going to really show any cards <laughs> in this matchup, but maybe just seeing if it sticks, if they like it, if they don't. Throw something new into the mix to try and play around, and that's always a good way to stay fresh. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, just to reset the stage, I, I dived back into the history books, and uh, of course, the history of these teams as Bliss and Man LFO. They did play in the grand final in stage one. Unfortunately, it was a very one-sided affair. In fact, most of the times these teams have played each other, it's been a very one-sided affair in favor of GG. But when they played in the EWC qualifiers, the grand final, Man actually, sorry, Antic, did actually win one map and it was Chalet. And it wasn't even in overtime. It was a regulation win for, for the now Antic roster. So, uh, they they probably come into this thinking, yeah, no, we can hang with these guys. We can beat these guys. Like, if you ask Chef, you'd be like, yeah, I mean, they're a great team, but we think we're great too. <laughs> I can hear it right now. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if Antic do win this, we will never hear the end of it. Ten seconds to go. Yeah, win would uh, catapult them into second, second at least temporarily, and then pending the Chiefs and Outlast game to Attackers close off the night, they could actually the retain a second position. So... Again, for GG, not much on the line outside of the flawless record this stage, only dropping a singular point in OT. Bang! Woo. Yeah. But again, a bit on the line for Antic, and an aggressive jump out straight out of the gates from Lunchbox. Is that trade worth it, though? Solace for Bark, I suppose, on this site. A lot of that vertical pressure from the Bark can be difficult to sustain. But equally, the Solos can provide good info gathering tools even in her nerf state. So, a bit of a strange one for one, I suppose. Good player to take down, though. True. The Deimos is uh, doing quite a bit of damage, though. Red was still on the Rappel and able to find one pick. I don't know how you managed to get kills. And Fisher is inside, by the way. Yeah, I don't know how he managed to sneak in here. Also, kind of wild to see Antic picking Kitchen as the first bomb site. Mm. I like here that Fisher is not getting too overzealous, going for a plant fast. He's just waiting. Whoa. The Chef is able to somehow kill Wettables. He probably should have been afforded that. Sage able to get in, take down Hunter. Nice shot there with the hollow side on that striker. All up to Sheffy now in that 1v3. And he's in a good position to try and deny this plant being above with tons of vertical holes. However, this position from Fisho is going to be nigh unkillable. And now in the post plant, Almost impossible for the Oryx to clutch this one. <laughs> Sage picks up the nice two-piece, and that's an easy opener for GG. Yeah, I'm not sure if the thinking there was for Chef to play Oryx in direct counter against the shield, but he was never in a particularly good playmaking position to actually utilize the dash. So that first jump out from Lunchbox. Yeah, sure, great pick. But then Fisher was able to sneak his way in towards site. Chef goes above in an attempt, I think, to try and eventually go for that dash, but it was cut off really nicely by GG, who had info up above, and the late lurk from Sage able to net two picks. So the opening round going the way of GG, and a tech pause to follow. I mean, so much to break down so far, guys. Where, where do we begin? Where do we start? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So already... The pace has been set by Antic. They want to fight. They want to jump out. They want to get in their faces. And every now and then we see a nice shot. I mean, Chef probably shouldn't have won some of the fights he, he won there. Antic are also pretty brave, not only in the play style, but going to the tertiary bomb site straight out of the gates is a huge surprise. But there's a reason why these guys in GG are the best in the region. We all know that very well. Uh, in terms of attacking win rate, you know, they have a... 60% if you round up from 59.46. So I'm just going to say 60 because it sounds better. And they had a 75% defensive win rate. So they're the best attacking team. They're the best defending team. They have the tied highest plant percentage, funnily enough, with Antic. And they're also the best entry team. They win 62% of their opening engagements. So literally the best in every single metric. And that's no surprise. 
Not every metric. Oh, really? The shit talk metric. GG have a the very... weakest in the region. Very weak all chat oh game. Oh, my God. In fact, I've... Pitiful. I've heard rumors that they immediately turn off the chat and mute... <laughs> mute it. I, I don't know. They probably do. <laughs> I saw a bit of conversation about the NAL on Twitter the other day. Um, I can't remember which match it was, but there was a bit of back and forth, and I think mm, the, yeah, the yeah. commentary team was making comments about it. And then one of the coaches got on and was like, oh, actually, you know, my boys weren't tilted from it. They mute. I saw them all mute the in-game chat before they went into the game. I think what some players do is they mute all the five opponents so they won't see any messages they type, but then they can still give it. They can dish it out. They just won't read it. <laughs> can I just say, weak... If you're gonna dish it, you gotta take it. Come on. Yeah, 100%. If you think you're, if you think you have the mental ability to play that game, then don't chicken out and mute the other team. Well, that's the funny thing. GG never give it, but I feel like nobody that gives it to them either. It's because it's like, GG are the definition of we let our results speak for themselves, yeah. and I respect them for that. 100. But it would be nice if they answered a few more interview questions. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait till the end of the stage, right? Uh, we have been promised more by Titan. So, come into stage. I hope we do get a little bit of it. Uh, look, to be fair, the roster change seems to be working out so far. Oh, you can't really fault the best player in the region in Tuhan. 80% costs, the best at opening kills in the region, more or less. Highest rated player far and away, and proven to also be very flexible. So a bit more of a traditional objective choice then here for the second round and incredibly util heavy with the combination of keeper barriers and mags to cover them as well as the Sawyer gates. And don't forget those mirror windows as well to help facilitate a couple more playmaking positions for the defense. Interestingly, the Osa being brought out here from GG for the second round. And so I wonder what Fisher is going to cook up here. Maybe it's for, yeah, to hold that breach run out as anticipated. I don't know where the second was utilized. Yeah, it looks like he has used both. Maybe for Samurai. Outside the IP wall, I believe. I think it was destroyed, perhaps. Okay. I saw them place it here earlier. Maybe they may have been taken out by Chef with an impact. Mm. Sage has become a lurker for this team. Like That's his primary role these days. We <laughs> saw it last round on the strike, and now he's doing it on the Nomad. I actually really love this. He's so good at this. Sage is the kind of guy that just knows how to be patient. Yeah, he's got the game sense for it. Yeah. You need good patience on a roll like this. He's about to face a mirror window as well and several players locking out his position as well as a Syria gate. So it's very challenging to push like that with a lurker. I think most players would decide to not push in. In fact, he actually loses his life. That lurk was pretty much handled by the setup there from Antic. And now GG have to focus up on site. Well, he did draw the attention of a couple of defenders, but then that's relying on the rest of the team. Main nice. Breach to make plays and plays are kind of being formulated. Fisher though had to land the second and doesn't. And off the back of that earlier man disadvantage, Redables now finds himself in the one versus three. Pretty untenable position for him now with the clock running down. And Scar's able to collect it. So the primary site choice pays off. And Antic respond in the second round. Look at that sly smile from Sheffy as well, man. He's enjoying himself <laughs> way too much like <laughs> I just beat GG. I mean, it's a pretty big pick onto Sage, to be fair. If Sage is allowed to go on a bit of a rampage there on the, uh, the lurk, could have turned the result of the round. Yeah, that was a good hold from Antic. To be honest, I just love that setup. You can pretty much hold the entire run from that mirror window, from that position in drum or in garden, depending on where you're going to play. It's funny, we often talk about how Skyscraper, it's got these two lanes in the middle that are almost impossible to clear, which is like that kind of dragon terrace, and then uh, shrine and drum and the mezzanine. <laughs> that was at uh, wet, by the way. I, don't know if you saw it. I did not see that, but yeah, Chef challenging to a bit of a free fall. I mean, the thing is, he's probably got him muted anyway. <laughs> Come on, GG, I want to see some engagement here. No. Yeah, uh, what I was saying, guys, I feel like often when you're playing on one of the top floor sides, you really heavily contest that middle portion of the map and then peel back. And it's funny, that set up from Antic, we had mirrors in the middle portions of the map facing towards the site and towards the roam. I think it's a cool way of trying to hold as much map control as you can. And GG never actually cleared those mirror positions. Alrighty then, over to T and Karaoke for the final round of this first rotation. 
The Amaru is in play. So Veda was maybe looking for some quick map control or some aggression. Early air jab and Hunter goes for a peek but doesn't find much. Over towards top black stairs. That's a position that you do want to try and hold with the smoke for as long as possible. That utility really good at denying the exterior entrance and you can be pretty uh, solo in that position as well, assuming your support dies from below. Vert in play. And so this is to, again, try to bolster that corner of the map. So we'll see how GG tried to uh, cook up this clear. Oh. Karaoke here. Is this to go... No, I think it's to go bottom or karaoke? Well, he doesn't have the diffuser, so looking for picks. Oh. Straight into karaoke, it seems. At the same time, Sage seems to go in. The shotgun finds the opening pick onto Scars. And he's going deep now with the SMG right around the corner from Chef, who does swing. Sage looking for that trade, but he's been covered off by Hunter. <laughs> this has been well withstood by Antic. And Fisher now desperately in his one versus four. I'll be honest, I don't know what GG are playing out there. That was a very, very brave and very strange attack. Chef's loving it, so that's, I'm happy. If Chef's happy, I'm happy. Again, <laughs> GG in this game are just going to throw everything at the wall and kind of see what sticks, I feel. Um, yeah, that was very weird. I mean, it wasn't the worst set play I've ever seen. Wettables did get the initial down on his entry, so he got his one. I think from what at least we could see, uh, the smoke played a really pivotal role in stalling out that entrance over towards top. You know, black stairs, back stairs. Where was the rest of the team, by yeah, the way? That, like, Sage like that was trade top back stairs. Yeah, like, that trade potential was just way too late. I don't know where the rest of the team was. If uh, Wet was going was to key focus key up key on Geisha, key then key why wasn't there someone Geisha window to hop in once he took that control and lock down that position? Mm. I just feel like with that setup, there's no way you can take that site without clearing either the back stairs or karaoke from a map clear, and GG didn't really do either. Yeah, interesting from GG. Well, we're going to see every site played here from Antic as we go over to bathroom and bedroom for the fourth round. So are certainly showing some good variety in their uh, defensive setups. We also see the Maestro introduced this particular round. No Bravo. Yeah, no Bravo on board. And so that will bolster the ability for Maestro to not only gather information, but some teams opting to actually play aggressively against drones. Lunchbox going for another jump out on regen util as well. Yeah, I mean, if he goes one for one on the Azami with three keepers in pocket, that's just a bad play. I would tend to agree. Double shield, eh? Mm. Fish and wet. It's kind of, I guess, common. Most fish would be wet most of the time, you'd think. Well, if you're a fish and you're not wet, you're probably dead. <laughs> I, would, I would hazard to guess. I mean, even for the brief moment that Flying Fish is out of the water, it's probably still considered somewhat wet, isn't it? Remember when we saw some Flying Fish recently? We were uh, walking by a beautiful lake. I uh, pointed out the Flying Fish. Oh, yeah, over, over in Japan. Oh, did you go to... We went to Japan. Yeah, yeah. That was actually a great holiday. No, it was. Good vibes. But yeah, those fish looked pretty wet. <laughs> <laughs> Not wettable, he's going to jump in. Oh, he's in sight. Hello. And so too is Fish. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, Chef Jeff is there with the shotgun, immediately taking down double kill from Wet as he finishes off the down player. With that, Diffuser now repositions and looks for a safe haven to go for a plan, but Jakenna is on route. And Scars has taken out Sage, Ooh. traded by Tui. It's all up to the Blitz now on site, who quickly finishes off Jakenna. The double shield ends up being the play. <laughs> Look at poor Jakenna. Yeah, GG are just playing straight up Chaos Ball at the moment. Um, really good split attack in the sense that they were able to navigate both shields simultaneously from opposite ends straight to the objective. And then we saw up above that those players attempting to hold Vert getting pinged out on the Grimbies as well. So they lost pretty much all ability to deal with these shields. Uh, Chef did an okay job here to get one, of course, running the shotgun as he loves to on multiple operators, but that trade potential was on point. That, that said, right at the end, if Tuham loses that fight, flips it pretty quickly because yeah. the Blitz is going to be pretty uh, vulnerable in the 1v2, but... Yep. 
I tell you what, GG, if they play like this uh, in Montreal, assuming they qualify for Montreal, they will get smashed. Uh, they won't. But they won't play like this in Montreal, right? Like, this is just such good fundamentals practice. They know that they are one-to-one -one better than all the teams in this region, and they don't have to have really complicated map clears or set plays. They can kind of play ad-lib, which is, to be honest, what they're doing. Like, they're not throwing, and they're not necessarily saving strats. They're just ad-libbing <laughs> this whole thing. Like, they're not playing any set plays. They're not memeing. They're playing the operators they want, and then someone's just making a call, go, and Which they just sink it. Which is honestly, like, really good practice to, like, just play off together. Because it kind of doesn't matter how crazy the plan is. What matters is that they play off each other together, and they have done that. Yeah, I think having that uh, innate synergy takes quite a bit of time in Siege, and with a limited number of play days, forcing yourself to learn that in officials especially is a wise idea. I don't know. Again, as sh operating under the assumption they make Montreal, I have no idea if they'll have extensive boot camp time before that. That's been sometimes the issue for this roster before oh, well. international events. Yeah, but they got GG now. They're not with this anymore. True. So you would hope that they uh, get a pretty long boot camp and they'll need it. I think Tuhan internationally is going to be in for a bit of a shock, such is always the case when you're debuting. Yeah. Well, this is nice though. It's the first time we are seeing a map clear. The smoke is going to make this awkward, but that mirror has been now nullified. And Chef has to decide how he wants to play this. The peel back is a good play, though, as there's a second line of defense here with a shield and another mirror window. I would have loved a glass there instead of a striker. Just to hold down that line and make it really annoying to clear. Mm. You can pop another smoke on this next uh, deployable and get that ground. Not to be. Nice play from Box using his keepers to continually protect himself from that winner to allow himself to play aggressively. However, the Monty is just going to force him on back, and this is the power of the current state of that operator. Antic having a full back tail between their legs. So much ground taken by GG. Still half the round to play, and it's up to the next obstacle now. Time to clear this second mirror window. Well, the biggest question is when is Brendo going to get a kill? <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. He's on a donut. I can't recall the last time I've ever looked at the scoreboard and seen Brendo and Jerry kills. Almost gets a team kill there on a Tuhan, who immediately goes down. Bit of DMR work in the long angle, I believe, from Hunter. He's the one playing at, uh, at mini bar at the moment. You talked about the two-lane attack in the past, right? And this is a really good display of just how challenging these choke points are to deal with. Yeah, very awkward to start moving on forward. Finally, that revive comes through, but still this mirror has not been dealt with. Dragon is still open, wide open for the taking. And we have support here from Hunter. He is the, the one guy in this power position. This DMR packs an absolute punch. He almost gets a shot off even onto Fisher guy, who's already low HP on that Montane. Hunter could be instrumental in this defense. GG need to have a way to clear him. But finally, they find the opening pick elsewhere. But Hunter still active on this line of sight, finds one. Supported now by Scars. Desperately, GG look to move on inside in the three versus three. Still having not dealt with that Aruni. It's all up to Fisher to try and do it, but Hunter wins that fight. Wettables now has to get around it, get aggressive on it. Hunter still holding on. He gets traded back. It's all up to Chef now with no time. And he finds the final kill as well with the shoddy. It looks like Wettables won't be going to the club after this game after all. Oh my God, the timing on that final pick as well. Chef looks back at the perfect moment to find that 2k and win his team the round and alongside Hunter, the two of them having a massive impact in that round. Hunter did a really good job to hold down this line, got the immediate trade back, held that position, also beat the shield somehow as well, which is insane. Wasted a fraction of a second here and that may have been the difference maker in allowing Chef to turn around and get that kill. And Chef Jeff has just won the SI Grand Final. Yeah, that's what it looks like, doesn't it? <laughs> I would say this is the best performance I've seen from Chef in a long time, as much as it pains me to say. <laughs> Especially considering we had him in the studio for a, an IRL interview after, was it last stage or was it the end of last year? I forget which. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. Oh, he's having a good game, this guy. Credit to him. And now GG fighting from behind. The best they can ask out of this half is even, three rounds apiece. I feel like they need it. Antic have built up a bit of form here. I'm actually quite intrigued to have a look 
That chef's uh, stats this particular stage. I feel like he has, he's had a fine stage. On face value, but I'm sure the uh, numbers will paint a story. Uh, well, unfortunately, he is the uh, the lowest rated on the team. But 87 EPS, not all that bad. Interestingly, he's actually got a plus three entry. Yeah. So, not too shabby. Box starts every round. Crouch next to a barricade. A barricade. Yeah. He's glued to it. Well, luckily he didn't go for that because he would have died. Mate, the timing on that. Defender is exposed. He's lucky he didn't do that a moment earlier. Mm. Oh, there's an opening though for Jakenna. <laughs> Best player in the region goes down. And the boss G is once again at large. I want to know what the play is here with this Monty. I assume getting Brendo in downstairs to work the vert with the buck and try and display some of these players on site. GG's attack on a carry last time around. It was very strange. Pitiful, to be honest. Adamaru did not see much success. And they failed to clear out the back stairs. Now they've got several roamers up on the board. And I think GG are just looking to focus up on site. A bomb has been located. Yeah, AJ Kenner playing so patiently. His flank is still being hard held by Brando as he looks to protect Fisho. Like Secondary this. hard breach to now expose Karaoke Hunter on the other side. Brendo could vert that out as well. I'm sure a ping will come through in a moment. Well, Fish needs to make sure to spot out Hunter. Bro, he doesn't check oh. the corner. And now this round is surely over. Oh no. Diffuser is down. The Monty has been killed. There should be a trade here from Sage. He's in prime position to do it. He just needs to land what another Brando? bullet. Brando Where blows. is the support? There we go. Finally comes through from little brother. That took so long. Yeah, eventually it does get done though. And that does make this possible now for GG, but still fighting from a player behind. And that diffuser is in the site. Feels like GG, this half have been playing from behind. Yeah. That's just the reality of it inside of the server. Antic have really stepped it up. It must be said, they're playing some pretty good siege. And Brendo, now in the one versus four, no chance you wouldn't think. Although it is Brendo, so don't count him out just yet. Oh, you can see the temptation there to peek from Antic. They decide to fall back a little bit. Remember, they know where that diffuser is, and there's these lines of sight to play off as well. He doesn't have a lot of info. Jakenna wants the boss G shot, you can tell. There's a player right on that diffuser, just around sight. Nice shot onto Jakenna. Don't give it to him. I mean, Brendo is so capable of winning this, and now he's got diffuser as well. Does he check the corner? He doesn't check it right, and box... Or Scars, rather, takes him down. That's a 4-2 split for Antic, and something they'll be very happy with. I don't really know what to make of that half. I, I, on one half of the argument, two attacks into Skyscraper is more than fine. Statistically, 60% yeah, defensive favoured map. But yeah, but then on the other side of the coin, GG should be probably a, playing a little bit cleaner than they did. Yep. But then again, to flip back to the other side of the coin, GG don't need to win this game. So. Yeah, but that's not good enough. That's not a good excuse. I I, I agree, but... And I don't think that's their attitude either. No, I, I wouldn't expect it to be. It would definitely be a temperament shift to what we've seen in the past, because in the past, that was definitely not the impression that we got inside or outside of the server. Yeah. And these guys know it's not a winner's attitude to be like, yeah, we might lose, yeah, we don't really care, we're too good to, to care. That's not how this game works. Yeah, like they certainly did try some pretty wacky stuff in that first half. I respect them but, for it. Which is fine. But the execution on some of them wasn't really quite to the GG level that we would expect. Yeah, I, I don't know what you would suggest GG do in that round to stop Fisher dying to that corner, whether it's him just face-checking the corner, or whether it's Brendo just pre-bucking the floor below to check that corner, or someone to drone. We're actually not seeing a lot of drones. And yeah. to be honest, like in this meta, yeah, you use the initiating operators instead of drones most of the time, the Monty, the Dokubi. But, uh, like, little mistakes like that. I feel like they didn't get a whole lot of value from the Monty. In those last two rounds, Fisher got nothing done. Yeah. I don't oh. know how he lost that fight um, behind the, the bar on the uh, on the other defense, over towards Exhibition. But, yeah, that round he got slammed. Anyway, we move on from that. As we said, two rounds from GG's. More than enough yeah. of a platform on a map that can be so difficult to attack. Let's see if they can back up the uh, insane 75% defense win rate that they've established for themselves. Mm -hmm. Could bolster it. Could could push 80% after tonight if they if they're clean. Yeah. Seeing so, yeah, Ying brought out. We haven't seen her yet, and we're seeing the Blackbeard from MF Scars, which is 
very peculiar. Not an operator that gets a lot of play these days. Um, and to be honest, like a lot of people don't think his shields really make a lot of difference in head-to-head -head fights. I like to see Antic checking for these Capcan traps, though. Though, strangely, we're seeing both teams go to Kitchen as their first bomb site in this game, and that C4 could be huge. Though, unfortunately, for GEG, it's slightly mistimed. Who forfeits the whole top floor on this Kitchen defense? I don't think I've ever seen anyone give up the whole top floor and reinforce the hatch. Like, when have you ever seen teams do that? Maybe in, like, silver rank? <laughs> yeah. Kitchen does get the first, though. They're playing to retake this top floor. They have a C4 prepped as well, oh. and it works. Somehow it works. This is, I don't know, stupid or genius. Pick your poison. Box is now inside with Diffuser, but it's not really going to be very safe. And the retake potential is on. Scars has to stay up here. If he dies, then, well, the plan is going to be impossible. The Candela's come out, and Box tries to use that to bait some movement. But GG know all they have to do is hold their positions for now. Even though there's a minute to play, it's on Antic to get this Diffuser down. And GG have so many ways of denying it or retaking. Yeah, Box hasn't been able to get value from those Candelas. Fisher doing a good job to tuck away inside of the corner. And now Box needs to go searching into the mist. Freebie. Oh, timing again. So low on HP here, Lunchbox. Needs to be careful. Another opportunity goes begging. And so Scars now left in the 1v3. And the Blackbeard Shield will not even save him in his first engagement. Uh, GG solidify that first round of defense. And I gotta say, the GG boys are playing Strat Roulette and yet <laughs> still making it work. Yeah, uh, like you said, it's not every day of the week that you see, well, one, a retake attempt, period, but I've certainly a successful one, which it was. Yeah, I've literally never seen a team just forfeit Geisha and Karaoke, the two rooms that you can deny the plant vertically on, on that bomb site. <laughs> Never seen teams forfeit it, but it was a bait the whole time. Like they even made the vert ready to play after they retook. <laughs> yeah. And then ultimately they didn't even play the retake position that they could have held anyway, instead focused in horizontally, ensured that Fisher didn't get put on too much of an island. It worked out in the end. So clean work from GG. We'll see if they can back it up here on the next primary site. Right, it's going to be over to Karaoke. Frost. Double Frost mats on the Geisha window. And that's a high... I would say quite a high likelihood of getting a kill or a down on one of those amidst the calamity of trying to clear Geisha. How much do you want to put on it? How many credits? I know. I'd like... I'll buy you your coffee next play day. <laughs> Can we do that? I can't buy... I can't buy any skins on the R6 Marketplace with that. You don't need any more R6 credits, bro. How many do you have? You sold... What did you sell? Uh, I sold my Obsidian skin. Most overrated skin in the game, my yeah? hot take. I think I got... I can't remember if it was 20k or 40k. How for many me. AUD worth of... Uh, well, either like 200 or 400, something That's like that. Insane. <laughs> well, you're I want to, I want to try and buy the... Like... SI 2017 Pro Charm. That one's so oh, cool, but probably out of my price range. <laughs> I think they upped the limit to a million credits now, so you can sell something for literally, I think that's like equivalent to about 10k. Oh my god. That's crazy. Wowee. Oh. I don't know what's gone wrong with Chef, but he had a, an unbelievable first half and he's starting to fall off a little bit, especially being that hard breacher. Not a great player to lose in the first minute of the round. No, Keep certainly not, going. and that's going to make Geisha much more challenging to exploit. So we'll see what the pivot looks like here from Antic, what their plan B is, if the hard bridge is the first to fall. I am assuming that a large portion of their attacking strategy will revolve around the Monty and claiming control over towards backstairs. Easier said than though, said than done though, with this cross established, Legion Mines are sure to be peppered around by Sage as well. And so Hunter is going to need a world of support to aid on this clear. Jake Kenner is lurking over towards Kitchen, so maybe he'll be able to pro progress across and help. Things oh. not looking great, though. That nade will clear the two frost mats, though, so I think my bet's off. True. Unlucky. No coffee. But Wettables does find the kill. 
based off of it anyway. And now looking to try and kill that Deimos. He's contesting him on the Vert and wins the fight. That is disgusting. <laughs> I feel like most teams would respond with a question mark after that or would, would, would pose the question mark, but not GG. Uh-oh, Hunter. Go in foot. Is this a flawless round? <laughs> Any bet takers? I think it will be. I'll bet you one copy. <laughs> I'll bet one million copies. Hunter's going for a pick. Oh, do we see a repeat of no the exact same way. thing? Please. All right, we have to. No. No, Fish. Fish, you got to stay in that corner, man. Fish! He ruined the full He round. ruined it. Wow. I mean, he made the mistake when he was the Monty, and then he refused to make the same play. That is extremely <laughs> disappointing. Too much respect. Way too much respect. 20 seconds to play. Hunter's going to get aggro, and he happens to walk into every single goo mine possible. He's a dead man walking. 30 HP, easy kill for Sage. And the double for his trouble. Very nice round for GG. Looking very steady on their defenses. You rhymed. I rhymed? Well, you know, I was a poet. Did you say double for his trouble? Double for his trouble. You were yeah. a poet, and you didn't even know it, James. Yeah. You know. Full force goal line, though. I like to rhyme when I've got the time. Ooh. Any more? <laughs> I no, know when I, when I cast with guns, I get a buzz. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Holy. <laughs> it's after hours time here in Oz, apparently. And when I watch wet, I get... <laughs> <laughs> when I watch wet, I get wet. <laughs> that rhymes. Yeah, been unfortunate there for Antic. Can't really take a whole lot away from that round. They did lose their hard breach straight off the bat. And that makes things very challenging on that particular objective in pressuring over towards Geisha, taking some of the attention of the defense, and then being able to exploit the stairs. Round nine we go, and it is actually going to be bedroom here from GG. Both teams just Do they go for another retake strat, James? <laughs> is the hatch Rio? That's my question. Ah. Okay, good, good. Although that is a pretty difficult hatch to fall off, depending on how uh, the yeah. attack plays it. If they're outside Samurai, it's quite challenging. So we've got that big boy Azami on the roster for covering up those windows, going for these rotations. Can I just say how beautiful the exterior of Skyscraper is? It's a shame we don't spend more time looking at how beautiful. Like, look at all the little, little lily pads and the ponds and the flowers. I mean, you know what I reckon would be lovely? Just to be a frog. <laughs> Just to be a frog and just jump around on those little lily pads in Skyscraper. I mean, wouldn't that just be great? Yeah, they do look pretty good. <sighs> skyscraper is a pretty goaded map. Do you remember old Skyscraper? I do, sadly, yes. Man, you, think, you think the choke points are bad on this map now? <laughs> My god. <laughs> Back in the day, it was something else. I, uh, one of the comp matches I played, I think it was like a weekly tournament, I was playing against the, at the time, like best or second best team in the region. It was Emorin's team, um, Taboo they were called at the time. And uh, we, I did not get in the building once because they had a player on their team who was so good with the outside Valkyrie cameras. I did not get in the building. <laughs> it was so much fun. Well, Antic have gotten inside of the building and they've actually got a pretty good map control with little effort. As you can see, the, the split attack here. Couple north and south. And Hunter to head this charge forward. But this is where they will begin to meet resistance. And a ton of util awaiting them on the other side. Deploy the shields, keep the barriers. Not going to be a hole with a bunch to deal with. So we'll see how they go about it. GG are holding firm. They really have not peeked into this at all as of yet. Maybe looking for a, a bit of info on the Jiggle Peak. I don't mind this though, but the timing is perfect for GG. <laughs> they just I walk mean, across. They played so passively and then they just happened to time it to perfection. The second Antic were looking away. Now Hunter's effectively trapped and alone with Jakenna trying to help him out, but he's taken out. It's all up to the poor Monty. I mean, shields are good, but they're not that good. Easy, flawless round for GG as they finally take the lead here on Skyscraper with another untouchable defense. Timeout requested then by Antic. And it's a toilet break yeah, for Jakenna. Jakenna. Toilet break. Oh, man. Well, 
We haven't had a rehearse, so the, the scoreboard is what you see is what you get. 11 kills for Wet. Yeah, he's uh, he's feeling it. And Chef has not found a kill in the second half as of yet. No. Needs to get on the Amaru shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Unironically. Yeah. What's funny is I feel like that was actually a pretty solid attack. Like the way that they cleared the top floor and then as soon as they were about to formulate a plan and actually execute onto yeah, where the a, players were a bit were discombobulated. Yeah, just a, two nice swings from GG, easy as you like. Which is ironic because I feel like my sentence leading into that was they're just jiggle peeking for info. And yeah. then the second after that, they begin wide swinging and find the perfect window of opportunity to uh, catch them off guard. So good read there from GG, good hold, tertiary site ticked off. And they pretty much have the highway to victory now laid in front of them. Yeah, they're going to go for the fourth different bomb site, four rounds in a row, in a kitchen, karaoke, bedroom, Defenders and now we're over to exhibition office. If anything, I'm a little surprised that they're showing all four. I mean, on the attack, they really didn't show much in terms of what you could say is like strats, or hiding strats and stuff. But they're showing us how they can play four different bomb sites. Albeit, I don't think any of these are, uh, you know, the only strat in the book. And the benefit of being such a full-time team, you know, these guys are the most professional that you can describe a team in O's, like in terms of what support they've got from their organization financially and otherwise. And that means that they've got the time to not just have, you know, a three-map pool or a six-map pool or a seven-map pool, but, you know, ideally a nine-map pool and uh, ideally multiple setups for every single bomb site as well. Got the support staff in Titan and Mingoran to support with that. Oh, they're using GG drones against them. I love that pre placed drones are back in the meta, by the way. Mm. Thank you, Solus Nerf. <laughs> yeah, she died for our drones. Oh. Monty is uh, well and truly in the building, marching forward, being live droned by Box, no less. And the E1D, oh no, the, sorry, the Deimos tracker. That's what that noise was. Spots out, uh, I think it was Fish or Brendo, but it's gone away now anyway. Jake wants to try and spot Fish so he can contest the vert while Hunter goes and fights here. Oh, Fish are getting verted though from down below. Withstands that pressure though. At least for now, but. Nice. Chef able to finally claim a kill in this half, and that was, yeah, a really nice clear by the attack. And immediately the Deimos to track another. I really love this pivot that we've seen from Antic, a switch up. They're using that Deimos to perfection. Will they catch Tuhan as he escapes? No! He, in fact, steals one with him and falls back safely towards the site. Yeah, that's gnarly. And able to just escape in time. Chef, though, elsewhere. He's cooking. Yeah, he found, found Brendo, who was on that lurk. Jekenna as well, and this round has pretty much now fallen apart for GG, so another spanner thrown into this match. Surely from here it's an antic round, and with that it's all but confirmed. Wettables in the one versus three, able to escape back to top Ooh. VIP. Keeps oh. it interesting, but the Monty will narrowly win that one out. A little bit close for comfort, but antic able to get the result. Yeah, that was very close though. Yeah, we almost made that 1v3 look winnable there, but Hunter on the shield. Uh, when it's a uh, an XV1 and you got that Monty alive, you should never be losing those. Hunter's actually one of the best shield players in the region as well. And he hasn't really been given a lot of credit recently because he's been so good at playing gun operators on support as well. But he has kind of got famous in the region for being a bit of a blitz and Monty one trick. And that was before the buffs came through, or the rework, I should say. Which, let's be honest, were buffs to the shields. Yeah. Just a bit. Well, guess where we're at, guys. Break point. It's break point, guys. Well, I didn't think we'd have been in this position, especially off the back of the tertiary side. I, like I kind of alluded to, thought that GG would just storm home on the primaries, but mm. not quite the case. Yeah. The good pivot in the previous round from Antique in terms of composition. They brought the heat with the bark and the Damos combo. And overall, was genuinely probably one of their better played rounds throughout this match. So. Keeping things interesting. And again, could potentially throw that flawless record from GG. Yeah, I guess excluding OT win, but we, we still count that. Could potentially throw that into disrepute. And again, Antic also could still finish in second place, barring a Chiefs meltdown in the next match.
That's right. I mean, they're only two points behind Chiefs, which means... What about round diff if they get an OT oh, win nah, here? The... So it has to be regulation from Antic. I mean, if they win an OT, then they would go to, like, cross 11 rounds on a Chiefs would have to lose 7-0. Unlikely. Um, I think they need the full regulation win and they need to hope that Chiefs don't get any points out of this one. But, yeah, I'm not actually sure about the, uh, the pick here from Antic. We actually saw the shield come out, but on box instead of Hunter. And it's the Blitz instead of the Monty. I'm not sure if I support this. <laughs> Sorry, I just sounded like, my a, vote. sounded like an angry parent for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I can support this decision, mister. Put Hunter number one on the ballot. Hunter Monty. Yeah, we'll see if it works. We don't see a ton of zero these days. No, it's a very Wonder. strange call. I don't know what its pick rate is. Let me find it. Okay, you, you can, do that. You can talk about this. And I'm trying to figure out exactly how Antic are planning on clearing B Brendo here. Because they don't have a breach on this external wall, and Box is going to have to just jump into a window, which is almost never going to work. You really need some hard breach to make this one happen, and Hunter's the only guy who's got the hard breach. He's not in position. The Azami's the one to get tracked. And that's actually not Brendo, the mute, who was on for that roam. Tuhan can fall back. Oh, takes a bit of damage from outside Geisha. But still, we have a Roma in Brendo, and he finds a free kill. I think they completely forgot about him. The Blitz oh. has gone down. Brendo's gone for two. And Antic are falling apart here at what should have been the final hurdle. They seem to stumble. Now it's Chef and Scars, and uh, oh, Scars is almost locked out of this position. He clears his barbed wire. As Chef is still on the window trying to support, a smoke locks him out for a bit longer, and GG can now recompose and set up to repel where they know these last two players are. Uh, five times. They've seen the zero. Damn. In the whole world. Uh, just in Oaths. Oh, in Oaths. Oh, that's actually more than I expected. Let me look at Global. Had a 60% win rate in Oaths as well, so... Jeez. That will now go down. But. It will. <laughs> Alright, let's see this entry from Scars. To try and grasp match point in the 1v5. And Wet takes him down on the long angle. Easy as you like. And a solid round from GG on the back of that roam from Brenda, completely unaddressed. Perhaps the Deimos baiting them into thinking that it was clear when they tracked his army, saw she was in drum. They completely tunnel visioned. And now GG have the match point. Well, unfortunately, my stats keep crashing. So that oh, fun fact has come to, to an abrupt end. I do apologize to all the Zero fans out there. I'll try one more time. There are zero fans out there. Yeah, there's. That was yes. a pun. If you I get like, no, there I... are zero fans. Yep. Attackers um, need to locate picking up what you're bomb. putting down. Nice, thank you, man. Yeah, I crashed again. That's unlucky, bro. Gonna have to get onto oh, the the line with Desertru, our resident stats uh, stats man, and get that figured out. Well, that that's just sabotage that's at this point. Poor form. Yeah. I think you should program it so that the, the stats platform doesn't work whenever we do O's. I think every time it crashes, it should uh, ping him on Twitter and say, <laughs> Des, please It's the public this. at. <laughs> <laughs> I do message him on WhatsApp every single time I get a bug, and uh, that man, to his credit, almost always replies within about 10 minutes. Well, okay, I'll put that theory to a test. Yeah. I'm going to message him I already him right messaged now. him earlier today about another issue I had. Oh, no. <laughs> Poor Derry. Uh, he lives for it, that man. Objective is to the bomb. Hello, good sir. I have a bug to report. <laughs> and can you just read out his phone number as well on my broadcast for me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't do it dirty. Everyone, please. Can I get this message out before GG <laughs> finish the game? That is the question. Oh, well, the pace will be determined by Antic. They're on the attacking side. And if it's going to be like last round, it's going to be a lot of standing around and then not a lot of executing. For GG, They've gone back to this kitchen bomb site we saw in the first round of this half. But I think there's a little bit more of a pressure upstairs this time around. I can see some roamers keen for it. Last time they completely abandoned that top floor. And now, yeah, we in fact have almost all the players from GG on this top floor. Hmm. Well, let's see how Antic look to go about breaking down this particular round. Brendo's going to get a freebie on here when Buck walks forward. Mm. Chef's not going to check. I'll keep the barriers are doing a decent job of just stalling out a bit of time here over towards Drum. Key position of the map from defense to hold down. 
It could be the pedestal for the rest of the push. Yes. Too hard elsewhere. Aggressing a dragon. Awkward angle. It survives for now. Brings out the Keratos. Now, this is a very dangerous weapon when it comes to close range. If he finds that shot, it'll take him down. Big kill on the Hunter, traded by Scars. But still, GG have held on to a little bit of control of that top floor. And Brendo has not yet sacrificed his position here in Shrine. As he gets droned on out, he will fall back. But job may be done. Even though GG are trailing one player behind, can Antic push us to OT? The question remains unanswered. Ooh. I'm nervous, James. I'm sweating. I'm sweating for Chef. Oh! oh. Chef is in the site, though. He's in kitchen. My man. He's cooking up a storm. Oh. He's found the double. It's all up to Brendo now. He's made this 1v4 perhaps possible. The 1v3 set before him. He's got this shotgun as well, but they should know exactly where he is now. And they're already in that site. He doesn't know it yet. And he doesn't seem to have much information. All of his teammates not having cameras to watch of where these players are on site. As Antic send one player upstairs to contest him, he might have an angle here. Oh, no. He can see Box! <laughs> and he shuts him out. 1v2. And this is still so winnable. A spray through the floor from Chef Jeff. And Brendo is keen for it. Spots him for another brief moment. Jakena has to win this fight. Going for the contest on the top <laughs> floor! Oh, no! And Brendo's made it a one-on-one. -on -one. Not like this. Chef tried to cook in the kitchen, but now he's been made a meal out of. It's up to Brendo to finish what he started. Seven seconds to play. And Chef Jeff has nowhere safe to plant. As one of the best players in our region goes for this retake. Brendo's going to clutch it up. Antic are done. GG remain. Undefeated in OCE. <laughs> I tell you what, we were ranking on Brendo a bit at the start. He didn't have the greatest of opening uh, rounds here on Skyscraper, but more than makes up for it there in the final <laughs> what are you round. Fucking four, dude. <laughs>